If I found the right words, you, you must remember that I have always earned my living by my pen and by my tongue. <laughs> Churchill Book Collector, specializing in works by and about Sir Winston S. Churchill and collectible works by all authors. One of the questions we get all the time is how to protect a rare book or a valuable book once you've purchased it. Um, and it's not an easy question to answer, but that's what we'll try to do in this video. Books are remarkable. Uh, they're not just physical objects. They encapsulate uh, time and place and a perspective um, that really is emblematic of a human desire to understand things and the desire to pass that understanding on to successive generations. Um, Beyond that esoteric value, books are also physical objects that sometimes have considerable wealth and value both as heirlooms and as assets. Um, but there's a problem with books. Books are inherently perishable. They are, from the moment they're put together, uh, they're comprised of elements that conspire to decohere as fast as they possibly can, um, not unlike their owners. The um, book is composed of glue um, and sometimes stitching and paper, sometimes of different types and different acidities, and all of these materials, and sometimes cloth, sometimes leather, all these things age differently, have different chemical properties, um, have different resistance to light or air or moisture, and um, age at differential rates and pull and tug against each other until, of course, the book comes apart. And that's all if it survived the rigors of human contact, which is a whole other source of wear and agitation for books. Um, what we like to think of is, um, when you buy a rare book, or you own a rare book or a family heirloom, you're not so much its owner as you are a steward. Your job is to protect it and make sure it lives longer than you do, so you can pass it on to the next steward. Um, and that's really what we want to talk about is how to do that. Um, the good news is it's relatively simple in concept. Um, books really need the same thing we need. Um, just like uh, uh, moisture and light and air are essential to life, um, they also can be destructive to life in the wrong amounts and the wrong concentrations at the wrong time. Um, essentially what we want to do with books is we want to protect them from extremes. Not too hot, not too cold, not too moist, not too dry, and just like most of us, keep them out of direct sunlight. Uh, there's a couple of easy ways to do that. If there's a single phrase that's useful to remember, it's moderation in all things. Um, that applies not just to people, it applies well to books as, um, too. Um, temperature. Excessive heat can accelerate uh, chemical processes that help deteriorate books. Um, it can cause drying and warping of books as well. Um, you really want to keep books at a fairly constant temperature um, and a moderate temperature. The kind of temperature that you would enjoy is probably the temperature that a book would enjoy too. Um, the good news is modern homes are really good for equalizing um, temperature and so keeping a book in a modern home is usually enough. Um, there's also the issue of moisture. Uh, moisture is essential to life and it's even essential to the processes of making a book. You can't uh, create paper from wood pulp um, without water and do most of the processes that create the materials of which a book is made. But once the book is made, it doesn't want to see water ever again. Um, water is a great enemy. Um, it stains books, um, it warps books, um, and um, it can make them decohere faster. Um, and it's not just direct exposure to water. Um, damp air. Um, Think of, uh, think of somebody uh, languishing in a, in a Dumas dungeon. Um, that's exactly what you don't want for a book. You don't want it in a, in a cold, damp place. Um, basements are a no-no, generally, for that reason. Um, and then there's the issue of light. Uh, again, light is essential to life, um, but it is also terribly perilous to life. Uh, that same solar radiation that can burn you on a sunny day uh, and cause all kinds of problems does the same thing for books. The difference is books don't heal. So when a book is exposed to light, um, it can dry out, it can warp, it can crack, or it can simply look like this. This is the first edition of the first volume of Churchill's Marlboro. I'll take a look at the spine. This is the same book. You'll probably see a difference. Uh, this one's been in the sun, this one hasn't. Uh, the dye that these books were made of just like human skin, um, it, it responds to UV radiation. And in this case, it responds very quickly and very poorly, but irrevocably. 
So keep books out of direct sunlight. If you have a library um, and you have windows in your library, make sure the bookshelves um, protect the books from any exposure to direct sunlight. You'd be surprised at how quickly and easily uh, a book can fade um, with even just mild exposure to light. Um, it really depends on the dye and the material the book's made of, but you don't want to take the chance and there's no reason to. So when you're trying to preserve these books and uh, keep them as pristine as possible, uh, there are things you can do to help. Uh, we don't go outside unclothed. Um, we'll use sunscreen, we'll cover ourselves in clothing, we'll put on a hat. There are equivalents for books as well that help. Um, one of them is if a book has a dust jacket, it's an easy thing to fit it with a clear archival dust jacket protector like this. Um, and here's a nice dust jacket and with a cover like this, it's just clear plastic backed with archival paper. You can just slide the jacket into the paper or into the, uh, into the cover like this. And once that's covered and the book's placed back beneath it, you've accomplished two purposes. First of all, you've protected the jacket, um, which you can still view, but it's protected from all your fingerprints and, and handling and soiling. But it also is insulated from the book. You've created one more chemical layer of protection between the paper of the dust jacket and the surface of the book, which serves to protect both of them. For an additional layer of protection, you can also uh, have boxes made for particularly precious books. Um, the advantage of these boxes is that they can be made to look just like books. If you look at this with the hubs and rounded spine on a shelf, it looks a lot like a book. But what it houses inside is the book itself. And the advantage to this, obviously, is there is no exposure to light. And it also helps equalize temperature and humidity uh, and keep them stable over time, which is a boon to the book as well. And they don't have to be, this is of course a very nice um, box. It's made with, uh, as a fine binding wood with leather and cloth and stamping, but they don't have to be fancy to be effective. This is a much simpler construct in cloth, um, but it still protects, does the same job of protecting the book within. So it doesn't have to be pretty, but these kind of boxes are a great way to protect a book. Um, again, the goal is to, is to modulate temperature and, can, and uh, moisture exposure and light exposure as much as possible and also protect from incidental handling. Our hands are covered in oil, that's why we leave fingerprints everywhere we go. Um, the problem is, um, even if you're a clever criminal, you can't wipe a fingerprint off of a dust jacket or a cover once it's on there. So a little protection goes a long way. So we've talked a lot about how to protect your books, how to hide them away and store them and cover them in plastic and put them in boxes so they're safe. Um, but it does occur to us that you might actually want to read and handle your books. So it probably bears talking about um, how best to handle a book for its protection. Um, a lot like us, books have spines. Uh, that's this back part of the book here where everything is connected. And that spine is just as important on the book as it is on us and deserves some care and attention. When you pull a book off the shelf, Try not to grab it by the top and just yank. Try to grab it from the middle. And rather than slide it, try to lift and pull. All you're trying to do is create a little less abrasion and a little less wear over time. Because again, unlike us, every little bit of wear becomes a permanent artifact in the book. Books aren't like us that don't heal. Um, when you open the book, support the spine. If it's in your hand like this, you don't need to open it up all the way to read the pages. If you open it all the way, you're creating stress on the binding and likely points that'll break over time. If you keep it supported, it's more likely to last longer. It's less stress on the binding. Um, and when you put it back on the shelf, the same rule applies. From the center, in as far as you can, with as little sliding as possible. We've talked about lots of ways to protect a book and keep it safe. But sometimes things have happened to books either on our watch or before we, they ever came to our possession that caused damage. Torn dust jackets, cracked bindings, um, spotting on the pages. I want to talk to you about two things that we should not do. This is tape. This is glue. These are books. They should always be at least this far apart, preferably farther apart. Do not do it yourself. If you really have the urge to do it yourself, go to Home Depot and make a birdhouse. Do not tape your books. Do not glue your books. This is terrible for books. It may seem like you're doing something innocent, but remember we talked about all the different components that comprise a book and all the different chemicals that interact and comprise the constituent elements of a book. These are not preservational elements and when you put them in a book, number one, you're doing something that may not be able to be undone and number two, you're adding a chemical process and an artifact to a book that isn't original to it and will interact poorly with it. Um, if you had cancer, you wouldn't get a biopsy 
uh, from your cousin at home. Um, if you needed stitches, you probably wouldn't sew them yourself. Don't fix your books yourself. There are professionals who do these things. Uh, there are binders, there are repair specialists for dust jackets, for bindings, for leather bindings, for cloth bindings. We really recommend you consult a professional. The last thing you want to do is permanent injury to a book that's precious to you that can't be undone. Visit us at www.churchillbookcollector.com or direct any inquiries to info at churchillbookcollector.com.